Having a healthy root system is key to having a healthy plant. The roots are literally the foundation that the plants are built on. If you could focus on just one thing when growing the plants for your garden, focus on the root systems. Today I'm going to show you how to take your roots from this and turn them into this. What if I were to tell you there's something that's naturally occurring that can enhance your roots up to 700 times what they would normally be? Most places that have an abundance of plants and not a whole lot of human interaction is going to have this stuff just naturally occurring. What I'm talking about here today is mycorrhizal fungi. Before really learning about this stuff, when I heard that word, my brain would just kind of shut down and I would kind of move past it. But when you break it down, it, it really makes it a lot more simple. Myco is Latin for fungus and rhiza is Greek for root. So this word literally means fungus root. This isn't the same fungus that's sitting in your fridge and the leftovers that's been there for a couple weeks. This stuff is root magic. Mycorrhizal fungi has a symbiotic relationship with over 80% of plants that are on the land. Let's talk a little bit about how this relationship works. All right guys, today I'm gonna to be using two different colors to kind of illustrate exactly what's going on with this fungi. The blue is going to be your normal plant roots and the red is going to be the mycorrhizal fungi. I'm no artist, so don't judge me here. <laughs> I'm really hoping that pulls up on here all right. So this is a normal plant's root system, right? After we inoculate the plant, what it's going to do is it's going to put little spores all over your plant. Those spores are going to be next to the roots, but not really doing anything quite yet. Once you get inoculated and once the fungus starts to grow, these little spores are going to attach themselves to your root. Now this fungi is going to start getting fed. It's going to be fed sugars from the plant that it's getting through photosynthesis. So that's just a normally occurring thing. The plant isn't really working any extra hard to feed this fungi. As it's feeding this fungi, the fungi is going to start branching out, growing more and more and more and more. And it's going to be almost an extension of your root system. So as this goes, your fungi is just spreading, spreading. You even have a whole bunch of little ones here. And eventually what happens is this fungi spreads out to 700 times what your normal roots would touch as far as the soil goes. This fungi collects the nutrients from the soil and transfers it to your plant. So it's out here reaching around, finding all the nutrients it can, and it sucks them up, sends it up the plant for your plant to use. So these little root looking things, these are called hyphae. And these hyphae are only one tenth to one fiftieth the width of a human hair. So this is a very small little fungi. A lot of it you will not be able to see with your naked eye. Once it starts to grow more, you'll see a little bit of white there and you'll see your roots just looking really healthy, really big. But these little hyphae can access nutrients that your normal roots would not be able to access. Pretty soon you're gonna have a root system that is healthier than you've ever seen before. Now another really good benefit from this is the water retention in this hyphae is a lot better than what it's going to be in the root system. So you can go through a lot more dry spills than you would be able to without this. All right, hopefully you can see that. Let's move on. So as I mentioned before, this is going to work for over 80% of the plants on land. A couple of that this is not gonna work for and that don't have this symbiotic relationship with the fungi are things like beets and leafy greens. Before looking into doing this, you should definitely look into what plants you're looking to grow and if this symbiotic relationship exists between the fungi and the plants you're trying to grow. Okay. Don't judge me on my on my dirty garden that I got going on here, <laughs> but I'm not confident that I have any kind of beneficial fungi working in my garden for me right now. And there's a couple reasons for that. First, there's been heavy equipment that have, that's gone over this soil multiple, multiple times. It's also been tilled for about the last decade, probably every single year. And when you have heavy equipment moving on it, when you get it tilled, when, you, when you're disturbing the soil pretty much in any way at all, you're gonna be killing that beneficial, that beneficial fungi. And that's why, especially in new homes and new neighborhoods and stuff like that, you don't get any of this beneficial stuff. And that's why in the forest and everything like that, you are getting that beneficial fungi is because the forests are more or less untouched. This year is gonna be my first year doing a no-till garden. Oh boy, here comes my goat. This is gonna be my first year doing a no-till garden. I'm sorry if you guys can't hear me, my goat is just so loud. All right, Lola. What's up, girl? Yeah. I'll show you guys here in a minute. This is gonna be my first year doing a no-till garden, and with the no-till, I'm really trying to build up some of that beneficial mycorrhizal fungi within my garden. 
And another thing I won't be able to do is I won't be able to use pesticides or fungicides within my garden because those are also going to be killing that, benef that beneficial fungi. So I'm really gonna be trying hard this year to, I'm not gonna be tilling, I'm gonna disturb the ground at the least amount as possible just so I can create an environment in which this fungi can live. Um, more or less every plant almost that's gonna be in this entire garden is going to be inoculated with the fungi. So we'll see how that goes. Hopefully you guys can hear me over this goat. <laughs> This is Lola and she says you should definitely like this video. <laughs> now let's talk about how to introduce this fungi to your plant. Today I'm using a product called Myco Bliss. This is something I just got off of Amazon. I will, leave, I will leave a link in the description below if you're interested in getting some. This product comes with five endomycorrhizal fungi. Endomycorrhizal, yes, endomycorrhizal. <laughs> Endomycorrhizal fungi are the ones that actually penetrate your roots and attach in there. You, you also have ectomycorrhizal and that's going to be on the outside of your roots it's not actually going to penetrate into them so the endomycorrhizal are the ones we want this is going to be the ones that are actually penetrating and making it easier to move the nutrients back and forth now i'm just going to go ahead and read off the label here on some of the benefits that this gives and we are looking at it promotes vigorous plant and root growth decreased amount of watering and fertilization enables the soil to retain nutrients for longer and increased nutrient use efficiency healthier and denser root systems improved ability to get nutrients and water uptake from the soil and reduces transplant shock all of those things are worth it to me <laughs> to get the best results you want to have good root to powder contact this stuff comes in powder form so right now i'm just going to really quickly transplant a pepper plant and while I'm transplanting that plant, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to inoculate the roots. This seed was actually sent to me from somebody that watches some of my videos named Chris. Thank you, Chris, once again. And while I'm transplanting, I'm gonna show you guys how to inoculate the roots. It's a pretty easy process, so let's get right to it. Right now, the roots on this Manzano aren't very developed or very big, so this is gonna be pretty easy. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get set up here with the new pot that this is going into. I'm gonna dig a little hole in the middle of that so that way the pepper is ready to go into it. and. I'm gonna hold the pepper plant right above the hole that it's going to go into, so that way when I'm dusting it, the excess dust is gonna be falling into that hole. I'm gonna hold the plant, and then I'm gonna kinda of just dust the roots as well as I can, and then all the excess is falling into that hole. After I dust the actual roots, I'm gonna be dusting a little bit inside that hole, so that way once I pack everything in there, there's just plenty of this powder that's encasing these roots. So this is gonna take quite a while for this fungi to really get established and start going. But once it does, you're really gonna see a difference in your root development. But this is a great time to get started when your plants are nice and small. So that way we can get a good buildup of this fungi within this pot. All right, so if you can get to the point where you have a healthy population of this mycorrhiza fungi within your garden, there's a lot of really cool things that happen. So let's say I've, I have my garden here and I have, you know, little plant there, another plant here. Yes, this is my, this is my, this, this is my, the best I can draw. <laughs> Another plant here, one back here. You've got your root systems, okay? You've got your root systems, you've got your plants. Well, if these are, if you have a healthy population of mycorrhizal fungi, what ends up happening is you'll have fungi over here coming off of this plant, just like I showed you on the other one. But what can happen is you'll have hyphae and the hyphae will spread throughout your garden and it will be everywhere. If you have a lot of nutrients over here, but not a lot over here for this plant, let's say you you know messed up on your fertilization or you put a little bit too much compost on one side, not the other, whatever it might be. Whatever signal this plant is sending out saying, hey, I need this, the mycorrhizal fungi can take the nutrients from clear over here on this side of the garden and transfer them all the way to this plant here. When you really start digging into mycorrhizal fungi, this blows my mind because my plant here can just communicate with the fungi and say hey i'm, I'm kind of needing some nitrogen right now and then if there's no nitrogen here for the, it to be picking up it'll just pull it from over here because everything is going to be connected and your soil is going to be fully inoculated all the plants in your garden are going to do up to 700 times better than they originally would have now that's pretty cool if i had to pick one fertilizer to use this year, this is what I'm gonna be choosing. To me, the benefits of this outweigh any fertilizer that I use, whether it be organic or not. The benefits of this and building a healthy root system that can pull up nutrients that they otherwise would not be able to, this is what I'm putting my money in. The possibilities are pretty mind blowing and the benefits are unbeatable. You will not regret giving your plants this boost. Trust me, try it once, try it for yourself one time and let me know how it goes.
If you're getting good information from this video and you want to see others like it, first, consider subscribing to the channel. We'd love to have you here. And then go ahead and watch this video right here. My hope is that you'll get just as much good information from this video right here as you did on the one you're watching right now.